So this is Muse. Arud Sharslock made an announcement. Yeah, you've all seen it. Muse have gone online. We're so excited to be working with Oldham Council to create a neighbourhood filled with character in the heart of Oldham. I'm thrilled that we are forging ahead with these exciting, ambitious and truly game-changing, game-changing plans. Game-changing, Arud Shah. I looked at this guy called Richard Dean because he gave me this company called Planet IT. Who are one of Muse's partners. This is who they are. Design practice with a passion for outside spaces. So they're working in partnership, London, Liverpool, Manchester. This is a close-up of who these people are. Very well healed, very wealthy, very the faces of people who make money from people like us. So of course they're delighted. Of course Planet IT are delighted. And of course Muse are excited. I don't blame them, but of course they're excited and of course they're delighted. Place Northwest. Northwest Place, magazine, newspaper, online. Hot on the heels of securing two, a £250 million contract to deliver the next page of Stockport's regeneration, the developer has been picked by another Greater Manchester Authority to bring forward 2,000 homes across a clutch of town centre sites. Oldham Council has appointed Muse on a 15-year contract, which would part ex be extended for another 10 years, so it's 25 years to redevelop plots totaling 24 acres in the town centre. So those of you who want to know how big the building in the town centre, 24 acres and 2,000 houses. The total value of Muse's Oldham contract could be up to £550 million. That's over half a billion pounds of public money is going to Muse or could be going to Muse according to tender documents published by the Oldham Council last year. Oldham Council said Muse demonstrated a thorough understanding of the ambition and scale of Oldham's regeneration plans, adding that the company's track record with similar projects and the highly experienced team headed by born and bred Oldham of Phil Mail were among the reasons for the firm's selection. The council are claiming that one of the reasons they gave half a billion pound contract to an organization was because the team was headed by someone from the town. That's their own words, not mine. Mate, we've had one regeneration scheme fail after another, after another, after another. I wouldn't care if the bloke or the woman or the transgender, whatever, if the individual heading the team was from Moscow, as long as they could deliver it. They should never have been factored whether or not someone is from this town to head up this project as a reason for awarding half a billion pounds. That should never have been a consideration. It should never have been a consideration. Arud Shah is truly excited that she secured a partner from Oldham who knows Oldham so well and he's just as passionate as me. <laughs> they don't see it. They don't even see what they've done wrong. We and Muse will be creating a new town centre for not just the people who live here now but for generations to come. These homes will create new communities right in the heart of Oldham which is a brilliant opportunity, not just for the Oldhamers who will get the chance to live there, but also for people from across the borough who can enjoy greener, more attractive and more enjoyable spaces to eat, drink and spend their leisure time. How one is linked to the other, I don't know. How do you enjoy more greener and more... How is it more greener? If you're building 2,000 houses, how is it going to be more greener? 2,000 houses, I'd imagine 2,000 more cars, at least, wouldn't you? Even one person had a car, that's a thousand more cars. Muse is feel male cell. We create kind, kinder places in our towns and cities that focus on quality, community and sustainability. I don't even know what that bullshit means. What's a kinder place? We create kinder places in our towns and cities. It's regeneration with people at its heart that will celebrate the proud town of Oldham, its rich heritage, along with its aspirations for the future. A master agreement, so this is what's actually happened. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at what Ian's got to say. They'll paint them green. <laughs> A master agreement has been negotiated during the procurement process, which includes establishing a joint project board that meets quarterly. And the partnership between the council and Muse will now formalise more detailed strategies and business plans for sites in the town centre, expected to take six months. So there's no plans. They've appointed someone to develop, develop the plans. So the first of the sites that they want to see redeveloped, this is what they're looking at. Remember, this is not my words. These are... You know, this is the official documentation. Oldham Civic Centre and Rochdale Road, which has the capacity for up to 600 apartments. So they want to put 600 flats where the Civic Centre is. 600 flats. The former Leisure Centre site on Union Street, which has capacity for up to 250 apartments. It's not on Union Street, is it? The former Leisure Centre. The old sports centre isn't on Union Street. But they reckon that's another 250 flats. So 850 flats. And the former Magistrate Court and Manchester Chambers, which is uh, just next to the Civic Centre, isn't it? The Queen Elizabeth Hall. Another 225 flats. And then they've got additional sites. Land on Bradshaw Street, Metropolitan Place site, Land at Mumps, Southgate Street and Waterloo Street, and the former Tommy Field Market. Flats, 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 flats. Thank you, Tom. Tony, Lord Street, that's where the old uh, spot centre is. I used to walk up as a child, walk up St Mary's Way, by the way, which they're going to reduce and knock into one lane going up and down because they want a cycle lane and some green shrubbery on the other side. So the main road going into town, they're going to cut in half whilst <laughs> they put 2,000 flats. Flats. One and two bedroom flats. 2,001 and two bedroom flats. Let's be clear here. The former leader of Oldham Council, Sean Fielding, is on public record saying that as a consequence of the redevelopment of the town centre and housing around the town centre, you would have, we would have people choosing to live in Oldham town centre rather than living in Saddleworth. Now it's becoming more and more clear what the council is planning. They want 2,000 one and two bedroom flats, social housing. They want to ghettoize the town centre. They want to encircle it with a new 21st century ghetto where the most vulnerable, the most needed, the most disadvantaged are housed in one and two, but packed, packed into one and two bedroom council flats, which have been proven in our town to have been disastrous. St. Mary's Estate, Werner, you saw them in Shulver, demolished off Manchester Road, the two buildings that have just come down. This is suicide is the wrong word because suicide means they are hurting themselves. No, they're not hurting themselves. They're making money for themselves. This is the murder of a town. That's what this is. This is the final nail in the coffin. This is the murder of our town. This means you're right, Julie. The town centre will become a no-go area. It will be encircled by one and two bedroom flat. It's be, it'll become a modern day ghetto. What should have happened, because 75% of the council's housing list is in need of one and two bedroom properties, is that this should have been evenly distributed across all areas of the town. Towns, Chadderton, Shaw, Royton, Failsworth, Saddleworth. Do the people of Saddleworth not want one and two bedroom houses, flats, where their children themselves can live there and grow there? Costed. And if you ask people in this town, they will consistently tell you they don't want to live in flats. Have a look at what the Great Places schemes have been in the former Primrose Bank area. They knocked all of those flats down and made them into houses. People want to live in houses. And they've been successful. Look at the housing in Calders, look at the housing in Werner, look at the housing elsewhere in the town. What's gone up new that's worked in place building? In community building has been houses this is outrageous this is the ghettoization of Oldham and they're celebrating it and of course Muse are happy and of course that, that R&I company are happy I don't blame them you know what they say about a fool and his money it's not Muse's fault that like you only give them half a billion pounds or this other very posh company who are jumping up and down and rubbing their hands with glee. 
about how excited they are. Half a billion pounds on building a new sink estate. Well, this is the thing, Gary. I want to play something for you. They're talking about schools, community centres and medical facilities. Just hold that thought. Uh, Phil mail, mail from uh, Muse, the managing director of said company. Again, I made this comment to uh, Oldham's council leader a few moments ago. Um, people haven't necessarily heard of Muse as, uh, as an organisation. Tell us the rationale and, and your qualifications for embarking on this wonderful project. That's a... Um... That's, that, that's a challenge for the gentleman to me right who's, who, who deals with our communication so maybe we need to work a bit harder so people know, know who we are um, no, I'm, pull, I'm pulling his leg no we, um, we're actually um, I mean, we're, we're a business that's been going you know, 40, 40 years um, and we specialise in urban regeneration and um, place so um, housing is part of that but um, helping place economy, um, office space and the like. Um, so we've been around, and, and examples of, of our work in, in the northwest would be, for those familiar, would be the Chapel Street and New Bailey area of Salford. We've been working on that um, best part of 15 years. Blackpool, Talbot Gateway. So, you know, we are, we are a well-established um, company, and I'd, I'd like to think um, our people are best in class at working on, um, on town centres. Um, what's our aspiration uh, for the town centre? It's actually to create aspiration. Um, you know, Oldham has many places, and as, as you know, I'm, I'm from the town, um, so I know, I know its history. Um, has, like all town centres, suffered a decline in terms of the amount of retail space? So retail space becomes empty. What do you do with that? Yeah, every, everywhere has been grappling with those um, challenges. Um, but let's, let's talk about it now as, as, a, as an opportunity. The pain's been taken, the pain's there, but let's look at it as an opportunity. There's land connected with a, with a population that we, we know is incredibly proud of its town. It's actually frustrated by its town, let's, let's be honest. It's been, you know, I, I know that. Um, but it's, it's proud of it. Let's, let's, so our aspiration is to give Oldham and Oldham Town Centre something to be proud of. So that's really good quality housing, facilities that the community need, housing across the tenures, so housing for everybody. Okay, I was going to. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this yeah, isn't yeah. about dropping in houses okay. for a certain um, demographic driven by viability, so who can afford it? Well, they get a house and that's that. We work, we deliver as much affordable housing as a business as we do, broadly <laughs> speaking, as we do um, um, private housing. Um, our housing is, is bespoke, so we design it to the place. We don't just take housing designs off a shelf that you might see then 10 miles down the road. We, 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 we work with the place. Importantly, we can't get to that point until we've engaged with the community. And I suppose off the back of that question too, um, as well as the essential housing ingredients, um, other 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 aspects of course the you know schools and and, yeah. and uh, you know healthcare facilities and yeah. things like that to, to to make those thriving communities work are those taken into consideration uh, they, they are it was um in fact we were just um, um discussing with the the leader and, and and members of the leaders team and officers one of the first thing we did um well look i'll i'll, I'll tell you a story T typically we've when we've uh, in the past when we've gone into place we create the employment space, we create the housing, and then we go, all ah, right, we need some facilities. That's, you know, that, that's how it's been. Um, our experience is that that's not the right way of doing it. So now we take into account, we have a forward look. So we look at, we've done a needs analysis already of the town centre um, and beyond. So where are the existing dental facilities? Where are the doctors? Um, where are the schools? Are they um, over or under subscribed? Sure. So what happens then when we are when we bring in more people into town centre? What happens then? Then we go right. Okay, so we understand we may need that. We may need that. And it's maze at the moment because things change. We don't we don't yeah, work in a static fluid. world yeah. exactly. But we we know we got a, an idea now of what will be needed, and then we earmark sections of buildings to say when right in that phase by this point we'll have this number of people we forecast we will need this so we design it in at day one and then and it might move from that building to that building depending on how fluid the town centre is but we're always factoring that in as we go forward not looking at it retrospectively and going oh god we now need to find space for this 
purely coincidental as I was walking over from the studio here just a few yards for, from where we are. I want to stop it there. The interview is the, the full interview if you, if you want to listen to it. Now, get beyond his gobbledygook and he doesn't talk very well and he's not very clear. So those are my initial reservations about this man, but he was put on the spot perhaps and he didn't know he was going to give an interview and he didn't have that clarity. So he talked in vague, abstract stuff. Now that's by the by. What he's very clear on is that he has done, his organisation has done a needs analysis of doctor surgeries of dentists of schools. That's what he said. Himself he said. Two fit points I want to raise with you on that. The first point is the needs analysis should have, and, and he also said that, you know, he made it as a plus point, like how we've now changed our practice, where afterwards we'd consider the impact after we'd done the work, but now we're considering the impact before we've done the work. So what will they be the impact of 2,000 new houses? Well, 2,000 new one and two bedroom houses will have, on average, either two or f three people in them. Yeah, so you're talking 3,000 additional people. 3,000 additional people. And they're all flats, by the way. They're all flats. I've gone through the list with you. Their own words, apartment, 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 apartment. There was nowhere any mention of houses. They're all apartments. And they're not apartments, they're council. They're flats. Here. I live in an apartment. I know what I mean by the word apartment rather than a flat. So we've got 2,000 new flats, 3,000 new people. And he reckons he's done a needs analysis already of the impact on services. Now there's two points I want to raise. The first point I want to raise is why has the council not done a needs analysis? If the council have commissioned this work and there's 2,000 new houses that they want to build. Why have they not done a needs analysis of what sort of services will be required? The council should have done this. Arud Shah and her associates, well actually it's not even Arud Shah to give her a due. Harry Caffrell and his team should have done this. But this is this vague thing, well actually they've already, you know, Muse apparently have done it. Now a private developer, motivated by profit, because that's what private developers are, how can they be trusted with what they've done to inform that? So I suggest to one of you, contact your local councillor and ask them to ask Arucha for Muse his impact assessment if they've done one publish it let's have a look at the impact that 2000 new flats will have on services publish it and i go back to this i'm not opposed to flats per se but i've seen how flats all congregated in the same area with the same demographic it's a recipe for disaster no one's going to buy these flats why would i and if I'm going to buy them, would you think I'm buying my 150 grand, 200 grand? The only way these flats, there is an alternative that they could have done, but they're not done. There's an alternative of regenerating the town centre and building houses, flats, whatever around. But they've not done that because they've not learnt the lessons of everywhere else. And Oldham being Oldham, we've got to do it the wrong way. The wrong project, costing 10 times more than it should have costed and delivering the outcomes that no one ever wanted. Or worse, perpetuating the misery that existed beforehand. And that's what this is going to be. They've done schemes in some of the inner areas of London where they've worked. Houses, flats, mixed tenure and mixed in terms of rent, social housing rented, a small number with some affordable flats. People have bought them at cheaper rates so they're sold not at market value, but at under market value, which is the only way you encourage people from other areas, the more affluent areas to move in. If I'm a professional and I can buy a flat in and around Oldham Town Centre for say £80,000 a two bedroom flat, which would be 130, 140 anywhere else, then there's an incentive for me to stay. So you sell them at discounts, massive discounts, and then you ring fence and a percentage less than 15% is the tipping point less than 15% for social housing because any more than 15% and then the uh, 
it tips but here we've got 100 percent 80 percent 90 percent 100 percent will it be social housing this is the destruction of the town Apoc apocalypse is the right word gary they won't buy these flats gary they're not going to buy the flats these flats won't be for sale and if anyone does buy them it'll be slum landlords you can then make money out of renting them to people this is the wrong way to go about it and it's nothing new in this town i'm genuinely distraught when i saw the news article come out and then i saw some of the facebook posts and in uh, twitter posts the place northwest guy even had the audacity to reach out to me and say why am i why am i opposed to it why am i opposed to two thousand people sorry two thousand flats three thousand people minimum moving in around the towns encircling my town center and all from a poor demographic why am i opposed to the ghettoization of my town well, news might make half a billion pounds off it and all the other companies that there are associated with them i'm sure will make plenty out of it but will my town be any better because of it what should have happened is they should have diversified the one and two bedroom the single people need and that benefit dependency need across the town instead of congregating them in a specific area which is what they're doing it's a massive mistake it's been proven to be a mistake when they've done it before in this town it's been proven to be a mistake in every place they've done it anywhere in this country and yet they're doing it here and this by the way the town center and where it sprawls from the bottom of coldest this is also still coldest coldest is one of the poorest wards in the country madness absolute madness but hey i'm not a counselor so what do i know do not fear them do not fear any of them